Last time you were introduced to the concept of a Boolean value and to how a Boolean value is interpreted in the context of comparing two numbers, two strings and two vectors for equality or inequality. You also learned what happens under the hood when it comes to comparing unequal in size vectors. The question now is uh, how does this relate to subsetting values from a vector? Well, hang on in there before you attempt to answer the, this question, since you need to learn a bit more about the REST relational operators in this video. So, the next complementary relational operators are the greater than and less than operators. Let's have a look at them. When it comes to numbers, things are pretty easy. For instance, here I check whether 4 is greater than 5, and sure enough, I get the false Boolean value back. On the contrary, when I check whether 5 is greater than 4, I get true. If I change the greater than to the less than operator, I get the exact opposite results as expected, as you can see here. If you compare two strings with the less than operator, uh, R checks the alphabetical order of the initial letters of the two strings. In this case, A from Alexandros precedes T from Tantos and we get the true value back. So, these greater than and less than operators are not such useful operators for comparing two strings after all, if you think about it. The last two relational operators are the less than or equal to and the greater than or equal to operators. These mainly apply to numbers. In a short while, you'll be able to appreciate their usefulness, especially when you learn how to subset vectors with the help of relational operators. So, as expected, 4, indeed, is less than or equal to 5, and, fire and 4 is definitely not greater than or equal to 5. The same applies to strings, but as you saw a minute ago, comparison is done in terms of order in the alphabet. So, in the first case, since A definitely precedes T, we still get true, whereas in the second case, the opposite. Apart from the simple relational operators assigned specifically for comparing two objects, R allows more complex relational operators that combine more than one of the simpler relational operators that you already saw. The first one is the so-called element-wise logical OR operator, signified with a vertical bar. Let's go directly to an example with a GLC underscore L1 vector of the GLC dot sample package. First, you need to load the package as always before you use uh, the GLC underscore L1 vector. Recall that uh, GLC underscore L1 is a vector with the first language profiles of learners of Greek as a second language. Assume that you want to check which of the learners in GLC underscore L1 have either Albanian or Russian as their first language. This translates to two different comparisons combined with the OR operator. The first on the left checks whether each member of GLC underscore L1 is equal to Albanian, whereas the second on the right checks for equality comparison for, of each member of GLC underscore L1 with Russian. In the middle of this complex statement is the OR operator and the whole can be thought of as the following instruction. Give me back which of the learners are either speakers of Albanian or Russian. The result will be a vector with Boolean values depending on whether each of the members satisfies either of the two conditions. For instance, the first speaker does not have Russian or Albanian as her uh, first language, whereas the second one does. Let's head to the second complex relational operator, the element-wise AND operator. The AND operator returns a Boolean vector where the true values represent members that satisfy both conditions, on the right and the left side. In the context of the previous statement, if we replace the vertical bar that stands for OR with the ampersand that uh, signifies the AND operator, it is impossible to take a single true value in the returning Boolean value, uh, vector since no member could be both Albanian and Russian. The AND operator makes much more sense for strings when it comes to using them for subsetting more complex R objects, such as data frames, as you'll see in the near future. For now, for using AND, it makes sense only for numeric vectors. 
Let's see what I mean by this with an example on uh, GLC underscore uh, part one. I remind you that the vector GLC underscore part one stores listening task scores of the same 100 students of Greek as a second language. Let's see which of the students got a score less than 14 and more than 10. If you would like to see which of the students has less than 12 but not 10, you can use a combination of the existing operators uh, for inequality and less than, as in the code here, uh, along with the uh, logical end. Essentially, the conditions on both sides of the logical end are checked, which means that when each member of GLC underscore part 1 is less than 12 and also is not equal to 10, then, in the new vector, a true value is recorded and a false, vo a false value uh, otherwise. Now, it's worth uh, noting that you could add one more condition in the previous complex expression, as in this code chunk, where true values are, return in the, are returned in the resulting Boolean vector for members of GLC underscore part 1 that are less than 12, they are not equal to 10, and they are also greater than 5. Recall that by Boolean vector I refer to a vector that solely consists of true and false values. So, the resulting Boolean vector reflects whether the members of a vector satisfy the conditions of a complex expression. Ok, now, how do we use this knowledge in subsetting vectors? Well, if we nest these complex expressions within the subsetting operators, namely the square brackets, then the returned or retrieved values will only be the members of the vector that map to the true values of the Boolean vector. Let's see in practice what I mean by that. Let's take the simple expression with the less than operator. If I put this expression within the square brackets, then the output will be a vector with those values of the GLC underscore part 1 vector that satisfy the condition, as you can see here, from the retrieved vector. Similarly, if I put within the square brackets the more complex expression with the logical end operator that we saw a minute ago, repeated here, then I get the values that satisfy both conditions. Let's try out the logical OR this time. In this case, those members of GLC underscore part 1 will be retrieved that are either less than 10 or more than 12. As you can see, R has a very powerful mechanism in retrieving vectors' values by allowing you to express for the values you want to retrieve as complex conditions as you like. As we move to more complex data structures, R's subsetting mechanism becomes even more important in preparing your data before you build your first statistical models. Ok, it's about time to freeze uh, the video on this slide with a code summary and as always, if you enjoy this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to also subscribe to the channel by pressing the relevant button on the video or on channel's homepage and then, in order to get updates when new videos are released, you need to activate the bell notification that stands on channel's homepage.